Hi, my name is Tessa Richter and I am a researcher at the Free University Medical Center in Amsterdam. I would like to introduce you to a recently published human mutation paper entitled Reflecting on Earlier Experiences with Unsolicited Findings, Points to Consider for Next Generation Sequencing and Informed Consent. In this paper, we propose a new model of close collaboration and communication between the lab, the clinician and the patient with regard to next generation sequencing and diagnostics. Moreover, we describe a list of points to consider when discussing informed consent in practice. With the recent advent of high throughput nucleotide sequencing in the clinic for diagnostic purposes, unsolicited findings and informed consent are receiving increased attention. To share experiences and explore dilemmas, we have organized an international multidisciplinary meeting entitled Exome Sequencing in Diagnostics, Exploring Needs for the Informed Consent Procedure. The aim of this meeting was to provide input for the development of practical guidelines in order to optimize the informed consent procedure. It became clear that both ethical and practical dilemmas can be encountered when discussing informed consent for next generation sequencing. For example, a patient can only give proper informed consent after the analytic strategy has been discussed by the lab and the clinician. This requires close collaboration and communication between the different parties involved before, during and after sequencing and analysis is conducted. When patients are given an opt-out option for feedback of unsolicited findings, a clinician might find himself in a conflict of duties, knowing potentially relevant information that he or she is not allowed to tell the patient. A possible solution here could be the introduction of an independent advisory board, deciding which results are medically relevant and what should be reported to the clinician and then the patient. As the appropriate informed consent procedure is very much dependent on the context, a list of points to consider was developed. Examples of relevant questions to be addressed are who exactly is given consent? Is it a patient or is it his or her legal representative? And how targeted will the analysis be and therefore how many and which unsolicited findings can be expected? With our proposals for informed consent for next generation sequencing and diagnostics, we hope to provide some guidance for clinical genetic practice. Please read our full paper for more details on the proposed models and their rationale.